Hey kids, this is Zyman. How you doing? Well, holiday time is almost upon us. Yo, Saturnalia. Gariamas? Gariamas. And today I want to talk about something that um, I've been thinking about a lot, especially as, you know, I've been getting a lot of, like, responses or dialogue, you know, with people. And uh, Bank Bar Como, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, bro. So just tell me if I'm not um, doing it phonetically here. And uh, Complex Games Apologist, you know, both said in different ways. Uh, at some point, like, you know, if you're not going to use a system, you know, or if you're doing things outside the system, you know, why, why would you have a system there? Because uh, I talk a lot about kind of invoking it when it's only necessary or not having the system cover everything. Um, and there are two guys that tend to take objection to that. And so we had some friendly dialogue about that. Um, so I want to talk about a little bit. I, I've covered a subject before about, about competent characters and, you know, um, when to invoke the system. Or is this, is this system always kind of humming in the background? Uh, you know, I had the opportunity to to watch a great video, um, you know, RuneSlinger linked a uh, video that I think Grognard Games did an interview with uh, Rob Koontz, which is one of the original playtesters of, of D&D. And whether you like D&D or not really is irrelevant. They're, like, it's the first time that anybody played any kind of, you know, role-playing game. That was like the birth of the hobby, you know, him and Gary and a couple other guys playing the, playtesting this stuff. A lot of great information in there, and I'd love to do talk more about that at some other time. Uh, but he did say some great stuff, and you know, one of the things he talked about um, was the idea, and I don't want to misquote him, that the rules are there to, to expedite play uh, and are secondary, so they should be invisible. And that, you know, really fits in with, like, you know, my basic philosophy, you know. And you can, if you've watched or watched these videos, heard me talk, you kind of figure that out at some point. And this is not to say, like, sometimes I think I misrepresent myself or my point. I'm not against complex games. I'm really not. Um, but... Here's the thing. I want whatever rule set, whatever system there is there to, to expedite play. Uh, I want it to be, you know, the vehicle that helps me get to where I want to go. Um, I don't want to, the system or, or rule set, you know, however simple or complex it is, to be the thing that actually generates uh, the play or, gen, you know, generates the, the outcome. I want it to be there as a facilitator. Uh, and so sometimes... You know, or many times, you just simply don't need to roll dice. You don't need to invoke the mechanic or invoke the system. Uh, and, you know, the idea that, you know, I've talked about it before, you have competent characters. You can kind of eyeball somebody's uh, attributes and say, okay, you know, you, you can, you're, you're this competent, you can do this. Frank Messer had a great, uh, great post not so long ago, and I think I actually, you know, copied and pasted it and, and put it in a, a, one of the discussions we had on the RPG Brigade Facebook page and uh, about the idea that, you know, He's the kind of game master that, you know, assumes that at a certain level, and he's talking about playing, playing level-based games, but it really doesn't, you know, matter. A certain level of, you know, whatever you call in your game, you know, how, how characters advance, that you're uh, you're competent, you know. if Just because you didn't say you did something, if, if you're that profession, or you're, you're that professional, then he assumes that you've done it, unless it's something really, really, really important. But, you know, saying something like, you know, uh, I have rope. Okay, well, your guys you know, probably knows to bring rope, you know, that kind of stuff. Or, you know, I, I was already checking for traps or, you know, something, you know, or, or you know, being cautious. All that good junk. Um, so in, in a case like that, you don't need to invoke the system, so to speak. I mean, that goes even further as far as, like, you don't need to always, you know, say everything that you're doing. Now, that's a whole different topic. Um, but, you know, to me sometimes, you know, even though you're not invoking the system, it's always there kind of humming in the background. And what I mean by that is, you know... The examples I gave, or I already gave like a D&D &D example, so I can look down at my character sheet and say, okay, well, this guy has a 16 dexterity. Okay, he's pretty nimble. He can he can do a lot of things when we, when we get to something where he needs to scamper up something or, you know, whatever it is. Okay, you don't need to roll dice, man. Your you're, you're guy is that good. You're that competent. Um, and, and, you know, another game like Ubiquity, you know, they have that built right in, so you, you take the average. So if you have a, a you know, a six die pool at something and, and there's a, a task, that uh, requires three successes. Well, the average is three. Okay, well, you're you're that good. You know, you don't need to roll dice. You're just you're just that competent at that. The system is still there, humming in the background, but it's doing. Oh, look, I got some kind of notification. Uh, oh, they got some great photos for me apparently. <laughs> uh, but the system is is still doing its job. You just didn't, didn't need to invoke it and, and roll dice. It was right there, and you just kind of rested on it. You know, that to me is is the kind of gameplay that I really like. And let's see if there's anything I really want to cover here. Um, you know. Mm, we'll talk about forum choices another t another time. <laughs> but that's, you know, maybe we'll talk about weevils in the flower. Love that. Uh, but that, you know, to me is, is you know, how, how I, um, I want a system to operate most of the time. And so it doesn't matter. If it's a complex system, great. If we have to roll dice more, great. Um, that's, not, that's not the big thing. But I don't want um, my game experience 
to be generated by the system. We want it to be secondary. It's there to expedite play, and then it kind of it kind of vanishes in the background. You know, that to me is. And, and Rob Kuhn said, I'd love to do a separate video about this because this would be a very very long topic. Yeah, <laughs> uh, long video, but it's a great topic. He talked about the idea of, of role playing games being this convergence between two different models. You know, a closed model like something like very codified like board games, or um, you know, miniature war games, which, by the way, you know, even though D&D was billed as an expansion of chainmail, apparently they just never played it that way. They just played it like you, we imagine, it, or, you know, we, like the way we play it. Uh, but it was convergence of, of that kind of closed model, a very codified system, and a very open model. And he talks about, like, you know, we're talking like improv theater and, and kids playing in the backyard. Super open, no rules. And uh, I, I really dig that. So that's the idea that, like, okay, you still have this big, giant, open, you know, the rules don't have to cover everything. You can be doing things that the rules are silent on. You're role playing, uh, but then you get to this point where you know, and, and it dep you know, depends on the system. Depends on what you want the system to do. It's like, okay, we get to whatever point it is. It doesn't have to be anything physical, you know, like combat. You know, let's not use that example. Okay, now I want the system to inform what happens here. Sometimes that means we roll dice, or do whatever kind of resolution mechanic it is. And sometimes we look and see what the system generates and say, okay, well, you know, maybe perhaps your character is this good at that. You know, whatever the system says. It doesn't matter how big or how small the system is. That's the kind of um, play I prefer in terms of, you know, how mechanics work. I'm fascinated by mechanics. I'm fascinated by systems. But at the end of the day, you know, I want them to facilitate play. They're secondary. And then, you know, they should be invisible. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it.